Hi my beauties, welcome back to Younger. Today I'm gonna to be talking about foods that are healthy for your skin. because we are what we eat and overall health is really dependent on your habits, your living lifestyle, and the foods you eat. So eating clean and healthy obviously is gonna manifest with beautiful, healthy skin. So before I move on, I ask that you like, comment, and subscribe and share this video with anyone who may find it useful. So when talking about skin health, you know, we are what we eat and looking under the skin in the microscope as a Mohs surgeon when I do skin cancer surgery, I can usually tell the health of a patient just by looking at their skin under the microscope. What is the thickness of their epidermis? What does their dermis look like? What does the vasculature of the dermis look like? How much collagen is there? How much sun damage is there? How much is your immune system fighting off that sun damage? And a lot of that has a direct correlation with the patient's overall health. Do they exercise? Do they drink a lot of water? Do they take vitamins and supplements which are nourishing for their skin? Are they using good skincare products? And do they eat healthy and do they eat clean? So when talking about health benefits from food in the skin or in any other organ system in the body, it's really important to kind of categorize food into major food groups. So I'm sure that this video is going to exclude many important foods that are important in your overall health and your skin health, but I'm trying to just kind of pinpoint the main basic food groups and fruits, vegetables, and foods in those categories that can have potent skin benefits. So starting with healthy fats, which is one of the main components of our skin that keeps our skin hydrated, retains water, omega-3 fatty acids and healthy fats in foods, maintain the lipid cell membrane barrier and maintains the dermal epidermal junction, which is the cell envelope that kind of like keeps the transepidermal water loss to a minimum. So pretty much when you're thinking about the skin, as we look under the microscope, you have the epidermis and then you have the dermis and then you have the subcutaneous fat. And I know I get technical with you guys sometimes, but I know you're smart and I talk to you like derm residents and I know you're thirsty for this information and you follow it. So I may get technical, but I'll try to explain it in layman's terms as well. But basically what eliminates the passage of water through the skin to evaporate into the atmosphere, which dries out our skin, is the lipid barrier. And that barrier keeps water inside. Humectants on top of the skin can kind of add a, a barrier to keep water inside and eliminates and minimizes transepidermal water loss, but eating healthy fats really adds an extra wall, a barrier to transepidermal water loss. So having omega fatty acids in certain types of fish, especially salmon, has a really high density of omega-3 fatty acids, and also herring, mackerel, other forms of fish have it too, and then healthy nuts, especially walnuts, are really good for the skin and have a lot of um, omega-3 fatty acids that can contribute to that lipid cell membrane that keeps the water inside the skin and not lost to the atmospheric environment where it's gonna dry out your skin and cause wrinkling and aging and itchy, dry, eczematous skin. There are also other forms of fat, like an avocado, for example. Just doing something as simple as adding half of an avocado to your egg whites in the morning after or before your workout will really have a lot of skin benefits. So just having a good, a good dietary amount of healthy fats is really good for your skin and will have a lot of skin benefits, especially in the winter time and especially at pe with people who live in dry climates or at altitude or if you go skiing or snowboarding in the winter or if there's not a lot of humidity or moisture in the air or during the winter months when you're walking into an environment where there's heaters where the, the moisture in the air is low, your skin can really get red, dry, itchy and kind of flaky and irritated or even in the summertime when you come inside and it's an air conditioned room, there's gonna be a drop in the humidity which can really be bad for your skin. So having you know healthy fats in your diet will help eliminate this as well. So moving on, um, vitamin C. Vitamin C is a really important component. If you watch my skin supplement video, I talk about vitamin C a lot. When you're talking about collagen synthesis, it's really important to remember vitamin C and copper, which is a coenzyme for the synthesis of collagen, but vitamin C is an important key component to an enzyme that makes collagen. So say you have a resurfacing laser treatment, or say you're just using good skincare products, or Retin-A, which is gonna upregulate the synthesis of collagen in your skin, you're gonna wanna have some vitamin C on board because it also helps remodel collagen and synthesize new collagen. So that's important, and I'm sure many of you know that vitamin Cs are in high quantities and amounts in oranges, but also all the yummy fruits, so like pineapple, Kiwi has a lot of uh, vitamin C in it, cantaloupe, 
uh, mango, papaya. Papaya is also a really natural, good superfood with a lot of potent antioxidants and free radical scavengers in it as well. But having vitamin C in your diet or throwing an orange in your smoothie or even taking vitamin C supplements is really important for collagen remodeling. Collagen and um, vitamin C is also important for wound healing. So in Durham residency and in med school, we learn that certain nutrients and vitamins and foods are good for the skin because when we have a lack of these foods in our system then we see the negative effects it has on the skin for example scurvy scurvy is when you have a vitamin c deficiency and you lose your teeth you get really bad skin rashes and so when you have a depletion of these nutrients you see what effects it has on the skin and that shows us that these are vital components to skin health so vitamin c is an important one don't forget about that one Moving along, um, also we talked about healthy fats and fish in that category, but fish also contain zinc. Zinc's also very important in wound healing, cellular renewal, and overall skin health as well. So you can find zinc in a lot of fish, and fish also has vitamin E, which is a potent antioxidant, free radical scavenger, kind of goes and helps regulate the cellular turnover and minimizes, uh, has anti-tubergenic effects, which is like anti-cancer as well. So fish has a lot of really essential nutrients in it, and if you can eat as much fish as you can, of course you always, we, you know, we read about and we can research about uh, mercury levels in fish. So that's something that you have to, you know, take into consideration as well. But everything is in moderation and balance, just like everything in life. Exercise, water intake, food, nutrition. So it's all about a balance and having all of these components be in a balanced diet. So orange fruits and vegetables contain beta carotene. Beta carotene is the precursor to vitamin A derivatives. Vitamin A derivatives, when we use them topically, is in the form of Retin-A, which we know has overwhelming research and data showing the overall skin benefits. And then Accutane, low dose for acne, helps minimize acne, and also has uh, potent anti-aging effects in low doses as well. So we know that beta carotene is, is in high quantities in carrots, in oranges and sweet potatoes, red bell peppers, you know, vegetables. If you want to do, a, you know, a dinner with like a stir fry with these orange and yellow vegetables, that's really healthy for your skin. And beta carotene has other health benefits at all. It improves vision and has other um, pro immunologic benefits as well. But in the skin, it not only can protect against UV light, but it also is a precursor to vitamin A derivatives, which are healthy for the skin and helps regulate oil production and secretion. It helps decrease the density of the sebaceous glands, which helps improve the texture and tone of our skin. And the interesting thing that I just mentioned is it does have increased UV protection. So kind of like HelioCare, if you guys see, I post a lot on HelioCare, which is a plant-based fern leaf technology, which can help prevent the damaging effects of UV light on keratinocytes or our DNA in our skin. Beta carotene kind of has a similar phenomenon. There's been overwhelming research studies and data that show that high quantities of antioxidants and beta carotene in the skin can help mitigate free radical damage and DNA mutations that are induced by UV light and kind of add a, a protective benefit, of course, on top of using sunscreen. Um, also, fat increases the absorption of beta carotene. So if you're having carrots or red bell peppers with your salmon at night, that's even more ideal. So um, having fatty acids, which are more lipid soluble, can increase the absorption of carotenoids or beta carotene. Um, I remember having one um, picture of a kid who ate too many carrots. It was a, a baby on my um, dermatology boards and he had this little like orange kind of discoloration of his nose and orange lips gums and tongue and that's when kids or even adults can have too much beta carotene you get keratinemia and that's when you have such high density of beta carotene in your body that it shows to it shows and manifests through the skin where you can have like almost like an orange hue to your skin so of course again moderation and balance don't overdo it on the beta carotene it won't hurt you but it'll make you look like orange so you don't want to have that happen to you um other fruits and vegetables that are important tomatoes have a lot of antioxidants and has lycopene in it um lycopene is protective also against sun damage and the antioxidants in vitamin and tomatoes including vitamin c are potent you know antioxidants can that can help be free radical scavengers and decrease the incidence of skin cancers and have chemoprotective effects against skin cancer and damage to our dna from um, ultraviolet light so that's important um, so some of my favorite ones that are still left to be discussed are the last four, one of them being dark chocolate. So dark chocolate actually is a potent antioxidant and has a lot of skin benefits. 
They've actually done some research studies on this as well, and they show that it increases blood flow to the skin. Anytime you increase blood flow to the skin, there's gonna be more growth factors, more cellular communication, and overall improvement in cell health. So dark chocolate, they recommend, I think 70%, FDA said 70% or higher, because anything lower than 70% dark chocolate is gonna to have too much sugar, and it's gonna to have too much of a high glycemic index to have it outweigh the benefits of the antioxidants. So 70% or higher dark chocolate, they say as much as 20 grams a day, which is amazing. I'm, I love dark chocolate, it's one of my vices, so I love hearing that this is one of the um, important foods for overall skin health. But because of the increased blood flow and the antioxidant uh, potential of dark, dark chocolate, um, it can help repair sun damage. It can also just increase healthy cellular signaling between your keratinocytes, which are the skin cells, and the melanocytes, which are the pigment producing cells, and the fibroblasts, which are the collagen synthesizing cells. So all of these cells in the skin have to communicate with one another, and they do it through cytokines and chemicals that kind of float between cells and regulate the communication with one another. For example, if ultraviolet light comes through the skin, the keratinocytes are gonna release chemokines or cell mediators that are these chemicals that float between the cells, which we call the extracellular matrix, and either help regulate Say example, it'll say, okay, melanocyte, you need to produce more pigment because we're getting harmful effects of UV light and the pigment's gonna protect the DNA and the skin from getting mutated. So that's why you get tan when you're outside in the sun, which you shouldn't be because you should be using heliocare and sunscreen. But in nature, that's the way that cells communicate with one another. So antioxidant, antioxidants and, and potent chemokines in these foods will help upregulate that self signaling to maintain overall skin health. And when you look under the microscope, you see all this happening and you look in electron microscopy, it's really exciting. And I know the nerdy scientist in me is coming out, but I can't curb it sometimes. And it's really exciting to see how these effects can affect overall skin biology. So moving on, um, ginger, very potent anti-inflammatory and chemoprotective effects against skin cancer. I actually, Remember when I was applying to dermatology residency when I was a third year medical student, I did I had a research grant to go over chemoprotective nutrients and foods. And I remember that ginger was one of the most potent anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer uh, foods that we can eat. And so what happens is when you have anti-inflammation, it helps with different dermatologic conditions that are pro-inflammatory. For example, um, rosacea, seborrheic dermatitis, eczema, atopic dermatitis, all of these kind of rashy skin ailments that are pro-inflammatory. When you do anti-inflammatory foods like ginger, it will help mediate and decrease that inflammation, which is gonna decrease the blood flow, decrease the redness, and just calm the skin down. Decrease the histamine release, decrease mast cell degranulation, which all this stuff vasodilates and makes you itchy, and the more you itch, the more the mediators are released, and it's just a vicious positive cycle. So curbing that with either a topical medication or something in your diet like ginger can really really be helpful so the anti autoimmune or anti um, chemoprotective or the chemoprotective effects of ginger is really important too so a lot of um, dermatologic conditions and diseases which have skin manifestations such as cutaneous lupus systemic lupus psoriasis these are all uh, induced sarcoidosis these are all um, dermatologic conditions that are autoimmune uh, derived and so by using anti-inflammatory and anti-autoimmune uh, foods in your diet it can help kind of mitigate this and kind of calm that down so that has a lot of protective um, health benefits and la or two last but not least red wine has resveratrol uh, resveratrol is derived from the skin of grapes and it's in a high percentage in wine so in your red wine when you're drinking that at night when your kids are asleep you can not worry about drinking it because it's going to have some overall skin benefits i remember one of the derm residents when i was at ucla present dr emma taylor if you're watching this did a whole uh, grand rounds presentation on resveratrol and I think they formulated it to be put into a skin cream or under eye cream. So it has potent antioxidant effects. It's a free radical scavenger and it stimulates collagen and elastin. And that's what the studies and data has shown us so far. And it's in a high percentage in red wine. So resveratrol, red wine, antioxidants, all good stuff. And last but not least, one of my very favorites is green tea. So green tea has potent anti-aging effects. 
Um, it has catechins in it. So catechins are uh, a phenol chemical that are uh, in high abundance in green tea and it has a lot of anti-tumorigenic effects and anti-inflammatory effects and a chemoprotective effect against skin cancer. Um, and green tea has a higher abundance um, more than black tea or white tea or oolong tea. So green tea is one of the um, healthy things that you can drink um, to uh, maintain a healthy skin, healthy biology of the skin. And also it's important to note that these um, catechins are decreased in their efficacy when mixed with milk or dairy products. So if you have your green tea, try to put lemon or honey in your tea, but try to avoid milk, cream, and dairy products because it's gonna decrease the potent anti-carcinogenic effects and the anti-inflammatory and anti-aging effects of your green tea. So that's a very broad summary of different food groups, but these are the ones that come up the most when you're doing a literature research. I'm not talking about a Google search or like a WebMD search. I'm talking about when you're looking at like the NIH and the Centers for Disease Control and you're looking at the medical data and the medical journals and research studies that tell doctors what types of food to recommend to their patients. So of course, as a dermatologist, I love the overall skin health, but these foods also have other health benefits as well. I hope you can somehow incorporate this into your diet morning smoothies, dinner, snacks at work, and just have an overall healthy lifestyle with a special overall health benefit of the skin. Thanks.